today's presentation, we're going to continue our study of geometry and look into coordinate geometry along with ordered pairs all occurring in quadrant one. Now, you might be looking at this thinking to yourself, well, I've seen this before. Looks like a graph or a grid. You know, you can use both terms. And in this case, this graph is divided into four quadrants. Now, the word quad, we, or the prefix quad we've talked about before means four. So quadrant naturally means, you know, four equal parts of this grid. One of four, well, and why are they divided up? If you take a look at these axes that run across, we have one that runs horizontally. I'll try to highlight that for you. You see this one runs horizontally. And we call that the X axis. So that would be the X axis. And then we have another that runs vertically up and down the graph or the grid. Take a look at that. Scroll down a little bit. There we go. And that is the y-axis. I'm going to label that up on near the top so you can see that. That would be the y-axis. It's these two axes that make up our first coordinate grid. And when you look at this coordinate grid, I said it was broken up into four parts or quadrants. And the first one we'll deal with is quadrant one. This is quadrant one. And it deals with positive x and y values. And we'll get to that in a moment. Now, following counterclockwise, we have quadrant two, which has a positive y-axis value and a negative x. I should have said that in reverse, probably. It has a negative x value and a positive y value. Quadrant 3 has both a negative x and y value. Quadrant 4 has a positive x value and a negative y value. However, we are going to be dealing with quadrant 1 to start. So let's begin. So this graph like I said, was just solely quadrant number one. So keep in mind that this is quadrant one. I'll write the word quadrant for you. This quad, that prefix, means four. So quadrant number one. And we use the Roman numeral one to represent quadrant one. And we have an x-axis running horizontally across the bottom. And the y-axis runs vertically up and down. And you can pick some points on these. We'll just pick two different points. Okay. I have, these are, you'll see parentheses with a comma separating two different digits. Uh, for the first example, why don't we use uh, 7, 3. And then opposedly, we'll do 3, 7 to see what the difference would be. Now, when you look at these, the first digit that appears represents how far you move along the x axis. In this case, it's positive 7. So, we haven't numbered this, these axes, so let's do that quickly. Now, whenever you're numbering a graph, got to make sure you number along the lines. And we'll start off with 0 in this case. And we'll have positive 1. And notice I'm numbering along the lines. You can't number the spaces um, for co coordinate geometry. And really, for graphing as a rule, you should really number the lines. And you can see these going up by 1. You could label these this way. You could skip every other one. Label by 2. Is that defined 2? And sometimes your scale is completely different. You might skip in by threes or so. Or, but I'm just going up by one. So we have 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then we do the same along the y axis. So this first one would be zero. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 
eight, nine, ten. I'm going to have to move up a little bit. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. You can see I'm just moving on up. Till I get to the end there. So we've numbered both axes up to 20. And I'll look at those two points. The top one up there, like I said, the first number to on the left in there, let me highlight that again, that is the x value. So we're going to do that first, and then we will move on to the y value. Okay, so 7, 3. What does that mean? Well, you always have to read this with x first. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move along. You can see I'll, I'll go right to 7 down here and follow that up. So 7, you can see right there, it would be 7 across the x-axis, and then 3 in that ordered pair right here, the 3 would be represented by the y-axis and that and the value of on y. So let's take a look. Uh, let me use a different color. There was 7 on x. And if you count 1, 2, 3 right there, 3 on y. And then if you kind of connect the two, see that kind of go up and meet at that point. And that would be your ordered pair 7, 3. So I could plot my point, 7, 3, right there, 7, 3. Okay, so that would be point 7, 3. Across 7 and up 3, you could re think of it that way. A lot of times, you know, you might want to think of an airplane taking off. It has to go horizontally across the x-axis before it can go vertically up into the sky. That might be a way to remember it. Well, let's take a look at the second point we have. We have point three, seven. We're going to read the x-axis first and then the y-axis. So I'm going to count across this y-axis until I get to three. Let's use a different color so it kind of stands out. So there would be three and the y-axis. OK, I'm taking care of the x over here. I'm going to look at this y value now. So I'll start at 0 and count all the way up to 7. And then let's kind of go at like a, I mean really if you look at a perpendicular angle that you could form by connecting those two values. Let's take a look at that. We've got 7 goes across and then 3 comes up and see where they would meet if you did that would be your plotted point. Your ordered pair would appear right there, and that would be point three, seven. Three, seven. And there you go. There you have two ordered pair points plotted nicely for you. There you go. And you could really do these in any, any combination uh, as long as the numbers are positive in quadrant one. So you could pick any point, plot it right on that line. Let's pick one more. Uh, let's take a, a look at point 17, 15. All right, point 17, 15, I'm thinking to myself, all right, I'm going to do 17 across the, the y-axis. I'm going to look at that first. So 17, oh, there it is right there, 17. I wouldn't recommend putting these dots on here. It's just, I'm just showing this as an example. So 17 over 17 and up 15. All right, so 15 would be over in this area. And if I wanted to connect those two, going across to 17, look upwards, and where they intersect, that is where I would plot my point 17, 15. 17, 15. And really, that's all there is to it.
I mean, you could do, um, you could create a figure. I mean, let's put one more in there so we can create a, a quadrilateral. We've been studying those lately. Check out our quadrilateral post if you want more info on that. So let's take a look at, oh, why don't we look at, hmm. Point 15, uh, 15, 5. So again, we're going to go across the x-axis 15 and up the y-axis 5. All right, so 15. All right, we're at 15. And we want to go up 5. And where they would cross, or, yeah, where they would cross or intersect, that's a great geometry word, that's where our point would be. So this right here, where those crossed, would be point 15, 5. And if we looked at connecting those points, we could do that. And there you have the quadrilateral uh, based on four plotted ordered pairs or four points uh, in quadrant one. There you have it. There's an introduction to coordinate geometry and ordered pairs in quadrant one. Thanks for checking out Mr. Marinick's EduBly, and we'll see you again next time.